thank you everybody for joining us on the Conscious Life Expo podcast. My name is Melanie and today we have a very special guest and his name is Dimitri Moreda and he is the co-founder of Spiritual Arts Institute. He is an Illumin metaphysical teacher and co-author of the bestseller Change Your Aura, Change Your Life and Heaven and Your Spiritual Evolution. And Dimitri will be hosting a free workshop and a free lecture at the expo this year in 2024. And before we get into those details, let me introduce Dimitri. How are you doing today, Dimitri? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Of course. It's so glad to see you and to learn more about your lecture and workshop. Um, but let's talk about you real quick before you uh, get into those details. Let's see how you got started into your work and your spiritual path. Well, yeah, I've been doing metaphysics for, uh, gosh, almost 40 years now. <laughs> I started when I was five, yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, not quite. Um, uh, I started when I was in my 20s. I had a, when a, a profound spiritual awakening, but I at first didn't know what that, what it was, what was, what it was that was happening to me. But there was some profound changes going on. I didn't really even know the word metaphysics as a practice at that time and then when i realized what what it was i couldn't get enough of it uh and about a year after the awakening i met uh barbara at a dinner party and did my first meditation and just one evening of talking to her um you know i knew this was my teacher you know she's a generation older than me um and we started you know she started training me right away and helped me to understand much better some of the things that were happening to me. Um, but I also, we also realized we like to write together. And I realized I was meant to be sort of part of the work. I wasn't just a student. So I became kind of the pioneer, a, a pioneer with her. And after a while of this, I was originally going into the film business. That's why I was in Los Angeles. And it was actually going quite well. But it was hard to do both, quite frankly. You know, and I started, I tried to do it for a while. But I realized, you know, it's metaphysics isn't just for me personally. It's it's part of my life path. It's part of my career. And uh, Barbara at the time had, you know, reams of information, you know, notes and things like that, but no books, no course material, nothing. And said, so, you know, we have to organize this. We have to create things and there's a lot more to add to it. So we eventually started what became Spiritual Arts Institute which is to give a home to these teachings. Um, I have to talk a few moments about Barbara. Um, you know, she was basically born clairvoyant. She was able to see auras at age three, angels at age eight, uh, going out of her body. All these things were happening. Her father was a Greek Orthodox priest and a builder of churches. And this is during the Depression era, right? So they would send him around the country and, you know, at first, Barbara would share what she was experiencing, but they didn't really understand. They thought something was wrong with her. Uh, she learned to keep quiet. When she was around 11, she met somebody that started teaching her. The woman could see the aura too. You know, Barbara's jaw dropped. Is that what it's called? She didn't even have a name for it at 11 years old. Um, and the woman could see the aura too. She was a hermetic scientist and then started to interpret understanding the auric energies then when they moved to California to, for him to build a church there, they settled down there. And Barbara got involved initially with the entertainment business during the golden age of Hollywood. Uh, but again, her calling was metaphysics, not entertainment. Interesting. We both had that similar shift you know, from one to the other. And there was a bit of training for her, even after all those clairvoyant skills. And around 40, she started her career. Um, and she is one of the most renowned you know, clairvoyance in the world as far as the depth of what she sees. And all our books are based on these clairvoyant observations. And also they're based on meditation. And our work, one of the fundamental tools is meditation to change the auric field. So we all have this aura and it's a complicated thing. It isn't just you're a blue and I'm a green. There's a lot of, a lot to it. It's more involved than even the physical body. And it's changing. It's not just changing with our thoughts and feelings. As we're spiritually developing, it's hopefully getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And you can do meditations with your aura to bring in spiritual energy and power to enhance the auric field, to enhance your life, 
and hopefully help accelerate your spiritual growth. The, the institute that we founded, the motto is helping souls grow. So our goal is to help you help others who have had their awakening, they're, they're on a path, either just had an awakening, or maybe they've been on it for 30 years, but to help, you know, accelerate, you know, really move from one place to another. And we offer some very comprehensive courses that are built on, again, decades of experience. Uh, and it's been a thrill. It's been the honor of my life to be to be part of all of this. And I have to add one thing. When I, we started the organization, I didn't see myself as a teacher. I, 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 I knew I was going to write and, you know, lead the organization itself. But she was training me now to sort of carry the mantle beyond her. She's not on the public platform at this point. So I'm kind of carrying on the tradition. And now I've become a teacher in my own right. So it's, a, it's an ancient lineage. You know, uh, one uh, in the India, they call it the guru Chela relationship in the West, they called it the mystery schools, but it's this idea of that you're following a tradition, there's a leader that's kind of guiding things, and then they pass it on to somebody else, and the tradition kind of keeps alive that way. So so we're working to keep the tradition. Barbara had some of her formal training when she went to LA with a mystic herself, um, who has had a lot of experience, you know, in the field. So it's a, it's been an exciting journey, you know. That's incredible. Yes, that's so fascinating. And so what have you seen along the years and uh, through that development of the of the Arts Institute? And yeah. how do you see that that has affected other people's lives other than your own? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm so glad you asked the question, how has it changed? Because uh, in the beginning, there were always people really interested in metaphysics, but at the time, the New Age movement was very strong, and people were interested in the phenomena thing. Oh, you can see the aura, or you can hear the angels, or, you know, the, the Barbie used to call it sometimes the circus floor part of things, <laughs> you know, and um, like we would, you know, in the beginning, we were just promoting Barbara, and we would promote her, when we promoted her as a teacher, People didn't quite get it, but you said, oh, she can read the aura. Then you got, you know, you got the attention. Today, it seems that the the the, the market has matured. Uh, people are asking deeper questions. They're wanting to know more about how can I grow spiritually? How can I really make some profound changes? So I don't know if it's partly generational changes. You know, it's a different generation now. And of course, things like when we started, you know, meditation was way out there. Now it's mainstream and of course, things like yoga, they're doing it in schools now. So it, a lot of what was fringy way back then is now becoming more mainstream. So it's exciting to see that people are taking this study more seriously. Right. And what type of commitment would one have if, when it comes to the Spiritual Arts Institute? Yeah, well, again, the, it's up to you, right? You could do something as simple as buy a book and you just read a book. We've got several books out. You mentioned two of them, The Change Your Heart, Change Your Life, Heaven and Spiritual Evolution, which is about all the spiritual planes on the other side and how we evolve through them. Uh, we had wrote a book on karma and reincarnation, another one on the angels, another one on healing with the aura. And we got two more we're working on right now. So, and that, you know, you read at your own pace, however you want, or listen to the audio, or you can do a one-day thing. You can attend an event, right? And just you know, be a part of it for the day. But I would say the heart of what we offer, which is kind of unique, is the ongoing training. And what I say there, what we share there is, you know, you're not going to learn to play the piano by going to a workshop. You're not going to learn to speak French by going to a workshop. You might get exposed to the basics of it, but you have to stick with it. You have to practice it for years. And that's the way it is with metaphysics. If you really want to dive in deep to your mystical training, you've got to spend time with it. Now, we have programs at various levels. The, 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 the foundational level is the seven spiritual arts. So it's a two-year program. And the foundation, again, is healing. Uh, is you know, healing part, but is meditation and prayer. And you really learn the different arts. For example, the seven liberal arts, right, you go to college for. That was designed to not teach, teach you in a specific 
trade, but to essentially teach you how to think, how to deal with them, how to intellectually deal with the challenges of life. The seven arts are similar in that we give you the spiritual tools to deal with the spiritual challenges and opportunities of life. How do you keep your spiritual center when things are going around you crazy? How do you deal with internal things from a spiritual manner? I'll give you just a very quick example, very practical. Um, there was a woman in our classes and she had a physical fear of crossing over bridges, especially with bridges over water and things like that. I mean, palpable, right? She would say, and of course she had to go over three bridges to get to work every day, right? So she went to therapy, all this stuff for years and about you know three months of the light work and the classes maybe four she said one day i went to work and i didn't even realize i'd crossed the bridges it was just a complete non-issue so this helps you work through day-to-day -day things that are going on in your life uh and again she worked that it didn't just happen right there, there you have to apply this it's not a magic wand and hopefully to understand what the what the spiritual path is about. You know, we keep talking about, oh, I'm on a path. Well, what, what is a path? And where is it actually leading to? And what does it mean to really grow spiritually? We know what it means to become, you know, from a child to an adult. But what does it mean to actually grow the soul? So all those things we are we explore and dive into. And, um, you know, a lot of people that really stand, they say, well, this is what I've been looking for. You know, it's like you don't know it till you see it sometimes, you know. Uh, before there was the iPad, uh, Steve Jobs said, "Oh, I'm, I'm trying to give them something they don't yet know they need <laughs> until they see it." You know, so it's just you you see that missing thing, and of course it happened to me. I, again, one night with Barbara, and I knew and not only was she my teacher, this was the teaching that I wanted to be part of. Yes, yes, and let's talk about the free lecture that is going to be on Friday, February 9th at 5 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. That is titled Accelerate Your Spiritual Growth. So let's talk about that free lecture and yeah. what you expect of that yeah. lecture. Uh, well, first of all, all our lectures are not just lectures, right? We do meditation. So you'll experience the divine light meditation there if you're not already doing divine light meditations. Uh, and it's wonderful to do it in a group environment, you know, when when more are gathered in a common in a common good, the, the energy sort of multiplies um, in there. We give an outline a little bit of what's in the heaven and your spiritual evolution book. What does it actually mean to accelerate your growth? And in our work, we we define spiritual growth as the gradual evolution through the many dimensions of life. You know, we talk about a great beyond, that there's a life on the other side, and that we came from that life before we came here, and we're going back to it. We know this is not forever here. But the other side isn't one place. It's many places. You know, the Bible speaks of, in my father's house are many mansions, not one, right? So these are, these are realms that you can actually be part of, literally, or there are also levels of consciousness. So the other side is kind of tiered. Now, your auric field right now, where you are in your energy field, where I am in my energy field right now, is vibrating to a certain level corresponding to a, a, what we call a spiritual plane on the other side. So if I died today, I would take this auric power I have today, not what I'll have tomorrow, not what I had yesterday, what I have today, and that would determine what spiritual dimension I'm going to be on on the other side. It's not reward or punishment. It's like attracting like. So in our work, we, we say the most important thing you can do is earn divine light. Build up your auric power because that you are taking to the other side. You're not taking your fame, your fortune, but you are taking your light. So light is that passport. So we'll start to go over a little bit what that journey looks like with the hope of inspiring you to make your spiritual growth an even higher priority in your life. People have had their awakening. It's not accidental. It's the divine knocking on your door and you're really supposed to follow through with it. Yes. And what can you share with us about the aura? What is the aura and how can someone start to recognize that within themselves? Right. Well, everyone has an aura. Okay. Uh, the aura is the energetic blueprint of the soul. 
So that means everything going on in your life, everything, even your thinking, your feeling radiates an energy corresponding to the quality of that thought or feeling. And that is part of what creates the auric field. So it's sort of the fuel of our evolution. To do anything we know in life, we know we need energy. Well, it's not just physical energy. We need spiritual energy. For example, in the auric field, there is a, an energy associated with, well, I'm wearing this a little bit today, prosperity, turquoise. Turquoise is an energy of prosperity. It's a consciousness of prosperity. So if you're going to manifest wealth in your life, that power of wealth has to actually first show up in your aura. This is why the book says, change your aura, change your life. If it shows up in your aura, it will show up in your life. We used to live in Los Angeles where the expo is going to be for many years. Barbara lived there a long time. And, you know, we often counsel a lot of people in showbiz, actors and writers and things like that. And they would say, oh, when am I going to be successful? When am I going to make it? You know, and well, as, as you may know, you're in Los Angeles, it's about being creative. You know, you got to have talent. Right? <laughs> you got to have the ability to do it. And the talent shows up in the auric field. And sometimes, you know, we'd say it's not quite there as strong as it needs to be. Build up your skills more, build up your talent more. And that's what's going to fuel your career. Not just who you know. Of course, there is connections and all that. But there's got to be something you're connecting with. You know, that the, you, you can have the opportunity, but you want the opportunity when you have something really to offer. And you've got to build that skill. So that is done in the auric field. And you can work with the aura. For example, let's say you, um, you know, you're at a job and you, you want to ask for a raise. You deserve it. You've been working for it. It's way overdue. But every time you go in to ask for the raise, uh, you kind of chicken out. You don't do it. And the aura, the energy of confidence comes through as a gold light. The willingness to step in there and say, I deserve this. So maybe in the auric field, you're lacking in that gold. You don't have that confidence to go in there. You can meditate with it, the, color, the energy power. Bring it in. You're still going to have to go in there and ask for the job. It's not going to automatically happen. But you're going to find, oh, you know what? It's a little easier. Because the power to make it happen is there. So this is what we mean by accelerating growth. We have to go through the normal growth processes. We can't bypass, bypass normal growth. If I just really pushed myself, I could start generating th that goal to go and ask. But if I call in it meditation it can make that process go smoother and be more successful. And this is in all departments. There's energies for almost everything in our life. And whether we need to feel more love, more peace, more balance, more illumination, all of it, all of it. Yeah, so this is this is beyond just meditation, though. This is, you know, aligning with your purpose and the things that you want to attract. So this is something that, you know, anyone can learn and take home with them. Is that right? Yes, yes. Well, they're the principles. You have to understand the principles. And actually, in our work, we do what are called meditative prayers. So we define meditation as the act of receiving from the divine. So when that gold is, let's say, coming into our auric field of confidence and wisdom, that's the act of meditating. But we also do prayer work. Prayer is petitioning the divine. It's a giving out of energy. So we connect with the divine. We make a request, not a command. We make a request and then open to receive. And then, like you just said, well, after you got to do something about it. You can't just meditate and think you're going to just be enlightened just like that. You have to apply yourself. So even if we meditate for an hour or two, the rest of what you're doing the rest of the day, right? You're hopefully applying all of that. We had a, a, a doctor in one of the classes and he he confessed. He said, you know, I don't, I'm not very kind to my patients. I kind of, I see so many a day, it's kind of in and out. And, you know, he didn't really see them as people, right? And so he had to change that. He had to develop more compassion. And that comes through with the pink ray, the love energy. So he meditated with that, but he still had to show more kindness. So he did. He spent more time with his patients, you know, during the examinations and things like that. He said, not only, you know, are my patients loving things now? My practice is getting even bigger. 
because the word the energy gets out the word gets out so but he you know he took the energy he took the meditation but then he applied it great wonderful so there's so much to experience at the accelerate your growth your spiritual growth at the free lecture that's going to be on friday february 9th at 5 p.m to 5 45 p.m and is there anything else about that lecture no no i think that's it other than we'll bring in some beautiful energy so you can experience it firsthand wonderful wonderful and let's go over your free workshop that's going to be awakening your christ consciousness on saturday right. february 10th 8 p.m to 9 30 p.m let's yeah over. yeah now that goes even in a little bit i don't say deeper waters but uh it's such an exciting thing you're asking how things changed over the years We've been working with Christ consciousness from day one, <clears throat> but um, how nice that it's a subject that's now being discussed. Now, when we do use that word, we do use it in a non-denominational sense. We may talk about, you know, how religions and metaphysics work together, but this is non-denominational. The word Christ is actually a Greek word, Christos. It means anointed you know, like anointed with divine essence. So we're really talking about a state of being, a state of consciousness. And regardless of our belief system, this is something we all have in us. Everyone has this power, this presence within, but not everyone has cultivated it to the degree they could. Barbara would lovingly say sometimes, you know, she could see all this in the order. So well, sometimes I'd look at, you know, that aspect of the order for people, and it's like it's on pilot light. It's there, but it's not very strong, meaning that person has not taken the time to really cultivate these higher awarenesses, because not only can you bring in power, you're meant to raise your consciousness. My first awakening was not seeing an angel. It was being in a higher state of awareness. Profoundly beautiful in a sense, mysterious, where did it come from? Because it would come and go, and so I was not controlling this. But it taught me, you you know, there, there are different states, there are different ways you can do. And what Barbara was basically saying, there's a methodology to try to develop these higher states of consciousness and try to step in. And the Christ consciousness is the crown of that experience because what it does is it helps to get you into the fuller, the, what we call the enlightened experience, you know, the enlightenment. Uh, Yogananda, the, you know, the great Indian teacher and Swami and mystic said, you know, the goal of life is to see God face to face while in a physical body. Now, he didn't mean literal face, but he meant to know this divine presence. Well, the key to get into that divine presence is that Christ consciousness. The Indians sometimes called it the Krishna consciousness, but we're more, we're, again, words can be used in different ways, but we're basically saying the same thing. So we're going to tr explore in the workshop understanding what it is more in more depth and what can we do to start facilitating it more, to, in a sense, start to open it more, become more receptive. Again, it requires application. There's nothing just automatically wave a magic wand and suddenly your Christ consciousness to bloom. You have to bloom it. But there are certain keys that will help you to move that process along. Wonderful. And so how should one prepare for this workshop in particular? Basically an open mind. <clears throat> um, and we'll be doing more meditate there we have a little more time there so we can do so you know you can bring in several energies we can we're going to work with some very sacred power energies to try to goose up in a sense when you come out of there hopefully you're going to feel more of your own christ consciousness and be encouraged to really put more attention here it, it's a i don't want to say it's an uncompromising energy but you you have to meet it on its terms you know, so you, you can't try to wield the Christ consciousness for your own desires. In a sense, you surrender to it, you open to it, and then it blesses every part of your life. Yeah. Right. And what is that Christ consciousness to you? Well, it is the link between the human and the God awareness. 
to get to what Yogananda said, to have that experience of the divine. And our work, enlightenment, is having, while you're in a physical body, having that what we call God within moment, where we know, not by faith, but by actual experience, that God is. That's the crown of metaphysical study. We're trying to get into that state, but it's so overwhelming, it's so exalting, and here we are in our human consciousness, we need the intermediary. We need something in between this all-encompassing consciousness and our human awareness that can act as a bridge. And that's what the Christ consciousness does. And we're all destined for God. So with, even if we're hardcore atheists, God still loves us. You know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Those are beliefs, you know. <laughs> it doesn't make it so because you believe something. You know, these are divine laws and we're learning these divine laws. Right. And when somebody starts to incorporate or activate that Christ consciousness within themselves, what happens along the way if they stay with that practice? They start to see things in a truer, a truer, clearer light. You know, we have many beliefs which are just erroneous. They're not real. You know, sometimes our mind gets cluttered with all thoughts. And I know now there's another buzzword, truth, right? We want the truth. Well, it's interesting, uh, the ancient mystic uh, Pythagoras, uh, in those days, those who had the direct connection with the higher uh, were called prophets, one who knew. And he said, okay, let's be a little more modest. We'll be philosophers, those who seek to know. So as you awaken this part of you, first of all, you need to be a seeker of truth and you need to be willing to see it. And as you awaken it, you will see it. A really a quick example here. You know, we talk about wearing the rose colored glasses. Let's say we're in love with somebody. We go, oh, they love me so much. Oh, yeah. And people try to tell, I, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> you know, it's, our perspective, not necessarily what's really happening. It's not the truth. It's the truth we want it to be. And of course, there's that day of reckoning. Oh my God, maybe they don't love me. Now that stings, right, at that moment. But actually, again, as the Bible says, truth sets you free. Because they were never meant to you for you to begin with. And why are you putting all your attention here? There's a person right over here that you are meant to be with, but you're not even looking at them. So, okay, the sting of, oh, I had my attention in the wrong place. Now life can come back into balance. Say, oh, wow, I didn't realize, you know, you're right here. You can see more clearly, right? And that Christ consciousness helps to facilitate that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that with us. And so yeah. that's <laughs> yeah. it's going to be the Awakening Your Christ Consciousness free workshop on Saturday, February 10th, 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And is there anything that you're looking forward to when it comes to the Conscious Life Expo this year? Well, I'm, I'm excited to be there. You know, um, we were in LA for years and we weren't able to do the expo because of the timing of our classes and everything. So this is actually the first year we're doing it. We're going to have a booth there and there'll be healings. You can get there so you can experience the healings. We'll have the books. We have these gorgeous illustrations that this fine artist did for us and just hopefully get to know you a little bit. So yeah, no, we're, we're excited to go there. So this is going to be your first time at the expo. As, and... a, as, a, as a participant. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And so you're going to have a booth. So you'll have books, you'll have healing. Is there anything else that you will have at your booth? Um, well, information about us, also the illustrations. Uh, this one behind me is not actually part of it, but the artist that did this. So what we did is for the Heaven book, we hired him to do illustrations of how we understand these inner worlds. So those are for sale and they're, you know, they're very inspiring. He's just a lifetime artist and, you know, in this work of kind of metaphysical things. So they'll, those will be available there. And um, yeah, just to hopefully see us and learn more about what we offer in the courses and everything like that and meet some of the other people. You know, I have to say one of the best things of this work is the fellowship. 
the community, the others, you know, you're, 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 we're fellow spiritual travelers, right? So uh, hopefully you'll get to hear more of the stories and maybe be encouraged to take a course. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And let's also share your website. That is spiritualarts.org. Mm -hmm. Where can we find your website? And I also see that you have your social media links there as well. Yes. yes. Well, you can learn about our courses, our events, and our books there. So it's like a one-stop shop for everything. Yeah. Yes, yes. So there's programs, events, uh, contact, blog, and I will also add the social media links down below in the description for everybody if you want to follow spiritualarts.org. And that's going to be on Facebook, X, Instagram, and YouTube. And so is there anything else that you would like to share with us today regarding your amazing workshop and amazing lecture that you're going to be offering everybody this year at the 2024 Conscious Life Expo? Well, I, I hope we can see you there. And the message we like to leave is just do everything you can to make your spiritual growth an even higher priority in your life. It'll bless everything that's going on with you. Yes, thank you so much for being with us today. If anybody would like to purchase tickets, tickets now are available for the Conscious Life Expo, and it is coming up right around the corner. So I cannot <laughs> wait to see you and meet you there in person. Oh, likewise, likewise. That'll be fun. Yes, thank you. And so for everybody out there, thank you for joining us on the Conscious Life Expo podcast.